we are here this morning to inspect uh, what is one of the largest uh, trunk roads in our country. Uh, we are studying at, at the river interchange uh, of what we call the project from Machakos to Earth River. But what we like to emphasize is that this is just one segment, one segment of the entire you know, corridor which we, we have from Mombasa all the way to Malaba. Uh, we have like six key segments, six key segments of this particular trunk you know, corridor from Mombasa to Machakos, turn off. That's one of the major segments, about 500 kilometers. And then we have from Machakos turn off to Earth River turn off, which is a separate project and which currently is about 78% complete. What is remaining is actually to do the, the interchanges and then it to be finished. That's the second one. The third one is from now from Earth River Tarnoff all the way to James Gishuru, uh, which is the new uh, highway, expressway, which we are doing to do. And that is about 64% complete, all the way to James Gishuru. And then from James Gishuru, another project from there, going all the way to Rironi, which is about now 93% complete. And then from Rironi, go all the way to Mao Summit, a distance of about 175 kilometers, but also with a loop going around uh, Naivasha, in total 233 kilometers, from Rironi to Mao Summit. That's the third segment. The last segment is from Mao Summit to Malaba, which is a project we are negotiating with partners on how it will be done. So that is what you call the Northern Corridor, from Mobasa all the way to Malaba. And you can see our focus is to make sure that no segment is left behind without being completed. Where we are studying is very critical because it is this Earth River turnoff or interchange, it is actually joining two critical Trans-Africa highways. This one from Mabasa to Malaba I talked about but also at the River Interchange is where you have the connection or intersection with what we call the Great North Road. The Great North Road starts from Cairo to Egypt. And coming from uh, Tanzania and Amanga, that section to the River is part of that northern, uh, Great North Road. Then at, at uh, the River, it joins now the Northern Corridor to the city of Nairobi, up to uh, Museum Tarnoff. For Museum Tarnoff, it goes towards the north, all the way to Moyale, you know, the Zika Highway, then uh, all the way to Keno, Sagana, Maroa, Nanyuki, Isiolo, all the way to uh, Moyale. That is part of the Great North Road. So you can see the configuration we have today here actually reflects not just our intra country infrastructure, but actually intra-Africa in infrastructure. And our idea, our idea is to make sure that we do not leave any part of the country behind. This project is probably one of those that showcase Kenya as now the PPP destination in Africa. For the simple reason, many PPP projects have not taken off because they thought Kenya was too risky. They thought that uh, our projects are not bankable. Our law is too complicated, our compensation framework is so complex, but this project, as the minister says, the president, the team went for the Forum for China Summit in 2018. This discussion about decongesting Nairobi, you know, recognizing that we are losing 100 billion shillings a year to traffic jams. The president was determined to find a solution for this problem, and knowing very well that um, taking additional debt was not an option. He challenged the ministry and said, look, you guys have to find us another way to finance this project. And the PPP project was birthed. They have been working 
24 hours non-stop from October 15th, 2019. They've managed to cut down the time from four years to two years. They have employed hundreds of Kenyans. All those people you see doing this work are Kenyans like you and I. They are being paid, they are feeding their families, and all this is money that is PPP. No debt from the government, yet this project will be executed. It will be carrying over 70,000 vehicles per day. It will help to decongest the city. The inconvenience that is currently being experienced by Nairobi residents is, it will be short-lived. It will end, and what we will have is a road network that Nairobians can use to expand their businesses, to improve their connectivity, to, to just improve their usability of the city, and most critically, for those passing through the city now, they have multiple options. So where we are right now is basically the junction between uh, the expressway and southern bypass. Nairobi, because of the traffic, was planned in such a way that you would have a Nairobi circular made up of four bypasses. The first bypass, southern bypass, from Kikuyu to where we are right now. And then from here you drive to City Cabanas, you join what we call the eastern bypass, which ends up in Roiro, a distance of 31 kilometers. And then from Roiro, you drive towards Ruaka, which is uh, what we call the Northern Bypass. Until now, the missing link was from Ruaka to Getaro on the Nairobi Nakuru Highway. That project is called Western Bypass, and it's about 90% uh, complete. So what we are saying is that within the next three to four months, all the bypasses in Nairobi will be completed. As you recall, the Southern Bypass was commissioned a few years ago. Actually, we had President Magufuli was the chief guest. And then, of course, the Eastern Bypass was done a few years ago as well, I think around 2014. But because of congestion, we are also planning to dwell that section from uh, City Cabanas all the way to Roiro. A contractor has been given that job already, uh, and it's important because it connects to Jomokianta International Airport. The importance of these bypasses are very many. Number one, in terms of mobility of Kenyans or travelers within and around the city of Nairobi, you can use the bypasses without having to go into the city of Nairobi. For example, this, uh, West, this uh, southern bypass next to us here. You can join from Kikuyu, go to Gong, and then go to uh, Isinya, all the way to the Namanga Highway, which I explained earlier is part of the Great North Road. Then you don't have to come to Nairobi. Then the Southern Bypass, if you want to go now to Jomogianta Airport, you don't have to go through uh, Westlands. You can use the Western, Eastern, uh, Southern Bypass and come and join it here. From here, then, you can go to Ans Tomokianta International Airport. Then, of course, if you are going to the north of the country, you can accurately use the Eastern Bypass and now go to Ans Mount Kenya. From Roiro, if you want to go to Rift Valley, you don't have to go to the city of Nairobi. You can use, accurately, the Northern Bypass. So this configuration was very, very important because Nairobi, as you know, is a regional hub in terms of industrial development, in terms of conferencing, business conferencing. And so it becomes more, more attractive if you create a configuration of bypasses which makes sure that mobility is much more enhanced. And hence we thought it's important to come inspect the expressway, but also to confirm to Kenyans that on top of the expressway, we have the other bypasses which will make mobility around and within the city of Nairobi a lot better. Within six months, we said this express will be finished, and therefore, the kind of inconvenience we have seen today, it's very short term. The pain is short term for longer term gain.